Congressman Mark yeah. Pocan is on the line with us. And uh, Congressman, just a, a little bit of history. For 11 years, every Friday on this program, Senator Sanders has come on for, for a full hour, the first hour of our show. And uh, I just step out of the way, and we just take phone calls, un, largely unscreened and unfiltered. Uh, uh, you know, we, uh, we screen out the drunks and the abusive people, but that's about it. And uh, if you're up for that, then, and I know you're available for the next, what, 30 minutes, roughly? Yeah. Or 25 absolutely. minutes? So you, you up for that? Yeah, oh, absolutely, Tom. But okay, great. Uh, let's see here. Uh, do, 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 uh, actually... I've got a bunch of calls, but I think they're left over from the last hour. But I'm just going to go through and ask Michael in Imperial Beach, California. Do you have a question for Congressman Pocan? Uh, sort of. Uh, Rep- Representative Pocan and Tom. Okay, uh, about religion. Um, I'm not sure what religion you are, Representative Pocan, but, but about redemption. In my opinion, the reason that Christianity thinks it's holier than thou is because when Pontius Pilate put up Barabbas, and Jesus is which one was going to be released. He let the Jewish people do it. And we all know who they chose. So depending on your religion, I would like both of you to just expand on that story. And that's why white privilege and that our religion is better than yours. Interesting. Thanks, My uh, Congressman, uh, what, what, Mark is re- uh, what Michael was referring to is earlier on, I was talking about the power of redemption stories and how redemption is at the core of Christianity. And and Ben Carson's life narrative is a redemption story. It's a classic redemption story. And Donald Trump ridiculed it yesterday. And I was just asking or thinking out loud, asking my listeners, do you think that this is going to damage Donald Trump? Uh, you know, because fundamentalist Christians, uh, many Christians, believe in redemption stories, and people generally like them. They're built into most of our literature and our movies. Or is it going to damage Ben Carson? Because people are going to think he's he's telling stories. But I don't know if that's something you want to weigh in on or not. No, I heard um, you know Donald Trump's comments, and I just think that in a primary in Iowa, um, he's he's not giving a very effective message for himself yeah. uh, because he's trying to you know bring down uh, Carson, who, uh, as you said, has a strong uh, base in you know born again and evangelical Christians, and uh, that is a critical part of the message. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, let's see here, Nick, watching Free Speech TV in Alexandria, Virginia. Nick, you're on the air with Congressman Pocan. Yeah, uh, well, I originally didn't call in to uh, speak to the congressman. I guess he came on after I uh, was on hold. Yeah, you've been on hold for uh, I wanted to make some comments about uh, corporate mergers in particular. Mm-hmm. Uh, and give an example, I, I worked for the Army for 37 years as a computer specialist. Uh, part of my job is reading the, uh, the industry uh, literature. And followed Microsoft and, and noticed that they had a couple of... Uh, they had a few say, strategies for uh, how they did business, and what they would do is they would go into small companies that wrote some good code up and had some good programs, and they would uh, sometimes offer them some. It was like it was like a mafia offer. They go in and offer you fifty dollars for a five hundred thousand dollar product, right. and if you didn't take it, they would steal the code, put it into their products, and then make that company sue them. Right, or reverse now, engineer the code, and who's got you know. Hundreds of millions of dollars in some little poor computer company has got to try to stand up against them in court. Right, or they would reverse engineer the code, or they would just write brand new code that does the exact same thing, but uh, perhaps in a more or less efficient way. Um, Congressman Pocan, this has been the core of why uh, Europe is going after Microsoft for for antitrust violations. Um, are, Are our antitrust laws being well served in the United States? Well, you know, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm corporations, I mean, I do want to touch on inversions like in a second, but, uh, you know, we want to protect, uh, obviously, the intellectual property of someone who's come up with something. And if a big corporation uh, is violating that trust, we don't have uh, an adequate law in place. I've got the University of Wisconsin in, in uh, my district, and, you know, one of the concerns we have are for when a, a professor uh, in the university come up with something, uh, that they don't have to somehow uh, have their ability to... Um, innovate be stopped by a company uh, because a company has more power to go through the process to uh, patent and do things like that. So I know there, there are questions that come up. Um, Tom, what I would like to just mention just quickly around corporate power is we just introduced a couple bills on a subject I know you're very uh, familiar with, which is corporate uh, tax inversions, where uh, a company can buy uh, another smaller, often a smaller company uh, overseas 
make that now the parent company and essentially try to evade paying U.S. taxes. And uh, we just introduced a couple of bills uh, just last week, one to uh, basically make them have to pay their taxes here and collect it here, not just have it overseas and until they bring it into the United States, that's when they finally pay taxes because that rarely happens. Uh, and secondly, not to allow them to strip the expenses they have uh, and just make it part of their U.S. profits, uh, even though it's for overseas operations, we want to have it be much more specific so that they're not totally avoiding U.S. taxes uh, because they've started this overseas entity. Uh, this is something that Dem- the Democrats, and I know the House specifically, have uh, tried to address over the last couple of years. And uh, just recently with Pfizer going through what they're going through by buying an overseas company that's worth about half their profits, uh, that would be the largest inversion we've seen yet in this country to avoid tax. Wow. It's, it's these companies just playing games to avoid their fair share. Congressman, we've got a, a five-minute uh, news break here at the bottom of the hour, and when we come back, we'll be taking, and we've got a bunch of calls now on the board specifically for you, people who have questions for Congressman Mark Pocan, who so brilliantly and ably represents the tw- the second district of Wisconsin. We'll be You're there. listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Congressman Mark Pocan, representing the second district of Wisconsin, a member of the Progressive uh, Caucus in the House of Representatives, one of the, one of the finest and most progressive members of the House of Representatives, a great guy. I'm so glad to have you with us, Congressman Pocan. And I now have a board full of callers from Alabama, Colorado, California, South Carolina, Florida, California, Cal- Kentucky, Wisconsin, for you. So awesome. You, you, <laughs> awesome. You're ready to take some calls. Okay, Norma in Montgomery, Alabama, you are on the air with Congressman Pocan. Thank you, Dr. Tom. Uh, Congressman, um, I have been listening to Dr. Tom talk uh, a great deal about the TPP, and I'm extremely concerned about it. Are you going to do anything to work with my representatives to try and keep them from passing this thing? Uh, I have been, since the day I got elected, I've uh, been working to fight uh, to try to get a good trade deal, and we don't have one. In fact, uh, the Washington Post today in their editorial um, singled me out as someone uh, there as they were urging a vote for TPP. Uh, I have been fighting against this. There are so many things wrong, from the lack of labor and environmental provisions to the investor state dispute settlement process that allows a three-person tribunal of corporate lawyers to be able to usurp local and state laws to uh, the fact that we may have increased pharmaceutical prices uh, because of the provisions uh, that they're doing around uh, prescription drugs to the fact that uh, we're going to have food that's not as healthy coming into the country and on and on and on. These have gone way past trade deals and now are basically corporations rewriting the rules uh, for themselves. So uh, we're trying to fight it, and uh, we think that we have a shot to beat this uh, back with both Democratic and Republican votes. That's great. Paul in Lucerne, California, you're on the air with Congressman Pocan. Hey, my question is for the congressman. Is First, thank you for being a congressman. But my question is, with the... The State Department saying no to the Keystone oil pipeline. Could they take us to a NAFTA tribunal like the Mexican fishermen did to the dolphins? To the tuna fishermen that were. Mm-hmm. So the, the tuna fishermen, this, you know, safe dolphin fishing. The Mexican fisher said that's unfair advantage, took them to a NAFTA tribunal, and now we have no more dolphin safe tuna. So is, is well, it. And that's one, you know, one of the issues with the ISDS provisions that we just don't quite know uh, what could be challenged. Uh, For example, if a local community has a higher minimum wage, uh, a multinational corporation could, through this process, uh, go after um, that local jurisdiction and sue them for monetary damages because it would affect their loss of future profit. So that's the sort of thing that can happen, and we don't know the limits uh, of what could happen in this, but we do know from looking at examples in other countries where people have been brought to these courts, uh, you know, it's a three-person corporate lawyer tribunal that can decide uh, things that usurp a local law by people who've been elected by their uh, people in their community. So we, have, we don't know is the answer, but it could be in any direction they could take this uh, court and usurp our laws. Amazing. Chris in Darlington, South Carolina, you're on the air with Congressman Mark Pocan. Yeah, uh, kind of following on to what Tom was talking about before the congressman came on, you know, with uh, antitrust and not enforcing the Sherman Antitrust Act. Uh, you know, thinking back to Vietnam, aircraft supply 
manufacturers that supplied the Air Force and the Navy with it, with warplanes. Yeah, just offhand, I could come up with eight different manufacturers. Now we've got one, Boeing. And they're currently flogging this F-35 that apparently has cost almost a trillion dollars and still has, still has not flown controllably well enough to be purchased and perform a mission. Yeah, is so there any your, thought your, to your question. Say, breaking up Boeing? You know, can, is there any way we can light the fire under the Justice Department to get them to start enforcing the law? So break up the large military defense contractors? Is that your question? Chris? Yeah, break up yeah. Boeing, okay. break... Yeah, I mean, or at I least think Boeing is the big. Yeah, Boeing and McDonnell Douglas, I think, are the two big ones. Congressman Pocan, your thoughts? Well, I, I think you know what the caller brings up is just in general. We have seen a lot of uh, mergers and consolidations of, of companies. Where we've got what uh, a few uh, now national airlines, uh, even among beer manufacturing. Something we watch a little closely in Wisconsin. Uh, there's more consolidations. We've seen this with the military contractors. Uh, we've seen this with telecommunication companies. And at some point, I don't think that the consumer does get the, the fair uh, service and the fair share that they deserve. And these companies become so big, as we know with the big banks, uh, that someone then decides that they're too big to fail. Uh, we do have to watch these mergers very closely because in the end, I think the public uh, does lose out. Yeah. Uh, Jesse in Miami, Florida, you're on the air with Congressman Mark Pocan. By the way, Jesse, before you start, just uh, P- uh, Congressman Pocan's website is pocan, P-O-C-A-N, dot house dot gov, and you can tweet him at Mark Pocan, M-A-R-K-P-O-C-A-N. Jesse, what's up? Hey, hi, Tom. Hey, uh, the Congressman, you in the state where they have the Green Bay, Green Bay Packers, I want to put it in the context of the Green Bay Packers are owned by the city. So I'm talking about the workers and knowing that Mr. Walker done got that right to work thing passed in your state. You think it's possible that the workers there and everywhere could incorporate themselves as like a, a uh, as a regular businessman and do it as a class and try to organize a cooperative to leverage against losing jobs and keeping public jobs, you know, viable, you know. That's the basic question. Cooperatives. Yeah. So, g- given the damage that uh, Walker's done to the envir- to the economy, are are there alternatives to unions, or what's the future well, and fate of union movement in Wisconsin? I, now, see, I believe unions. I mean, are just going through a very tough period, but we will come back. Uh, I, I think often when the Republicans decide to go after a group, uh, I saw this ten years ago when they went after. Uh, the gay and lesbian movement. Um, then after that, uh, they went after uh, immigration. Uh, and now they're really going after, I think, unions. That's the, I think we're at the peak of that fight that they're doing. They try to find someone for you to fear and for someone for you to hate so they can pass all the stuff that they want to pass for corporate power and everything else. Uh, but every time they do this, they overreach. And look what happened just in the LGBT movement. Um, in 2006, we were still, every single state that had an amendment defining marriage passed it. And yet now we have marriage equality across the country because they overreached and the public realized what they were doing was wrong. Immigration reform, public opinion is on the side of having a pathway to citizenship for aspiring Americans. So they've overreached and now they're attacking unions. Well, once people realize that the reason you have good wages and you have good benefits and you have a weekend and you have the the privileges that we have are because unions have fought for them over the years. Uh, In Washington, there is really only one lobby for the middle class, and it's largely been the labor movement. And I think these attacks we will come back from. So uh, while I appreciate the cooperative movement, we have a lot of businesses that are cooperatives, uh, especially in Wisconsin. It's one of the centers of that um, movement. Uh, I think unions will still be able to come back and we'll be able to organize and be stronger than ever. Uh, but we are in a very dark period right now, and Scott Walker is the epitome uh, of who's used this uh, to try to create fear among people and put past blame when the blame isn't due. There you go. Alice, uh, listening on KBAI in Leiden, Linden, Washington State. Alice, you're on the air with Congressman Mark Pocan. Thank you, Congressman Pocan. I've been an admirer of yours since I saw you in the film Alec Exposed and saw how you showed us how our houses were being controlled by this, this legislative council. I have just learned that my representative here in Washington State legislature 
did attend the ALEC meeting this spring, and I'm wondering how can I follow her her legislation this year and use it in next year's election? Yeah, I'll tell you, there, there is a group called Center for Media and Democracy that's based out of Madison, Wisconsin, um, that I think does some of the best work in the country around exposing ALEC uh, for what they are a corporate dating service between large corporation and uh, corporations and, and willing legislators to advance uh, their policy, not good public policy. And if you go uh, and contact them and get sign up for their list, they will keep you informed of what bills ALEC is pushing and moving, and then you can monitor uh, with the legislators uh, that you have in your area and hold them accountable because uh, ALEC is not about you or me. ALEC is about the corporations that pay into that and almost anything that comes through there is bad legislation. Congressman Pocan, we have 30 seconds left. What do you see as the biggest issues before us? What do we need to be doing? In- well, I think, you know, the thing that I see that's it's lagged behind the rest of the economy has been wages. And we need to, I think a big part of it is the labor movement. I'm a, a huge supporter of it. I have a union printing business I've had since I was 23 years old. If we are going to really address um, the issues of quality and everything we need to, a big chunk of that is making sure that families have opportunities through good wages. The economy has come back. CEO salaries are up. Productivity is up. The wages are dead flat, and we need to address that. And I think those are some of the most important economic progressive issues that we can put forward. That's great. I didn't know you own a printing company. My youngest brother's a union printer. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah, it's a 23. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Congressman Mark Pocan. Uh, and uh, you can tweet at Mark, M-A-R-K-P-O-C-A-N, his website, Pocan, P-O-C-A-N, dot house, dot gov. Congressman, thank you for sharing your time with us today. Oh, thank you, Tom. It's always a wonderful Great time. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.